Hi, I'm Phoebe and this is Kerry from Diverse Learners and today we're going to be talking about good sleep hygiene, what sleep hygiene is, reasons why people with learning difficulties, dyspraxia, dyslexia, all those kind of things, struggle or might find it difficult to get to sleep and we're going to give you reasons why, you know, we struggle. It's so, not to be kind of embarrassed or um, worried about it. And give you tips on how to improve your sleep hygiene because for me it takes me about an hour to physically get to sleep and I always put things pop into my head, what do I have to do tomorrow and sometimes, you know, it's so compelling that I have to get out of bed and do it so I don't feel the stress of that the next day. And also it, it can be a bit of a negative experience sometimes when you're stressing about certain things that have happened that day and what could I have done differently and what do I have to do tomorrow and should I be doing it now when really you should be sleeping and you worry about oh I need to get to sleep now in order to do this this, this in the morning which inhibits you getting to sleep which really just... it's a vicious circle <laughs> yeah absolutely and it's very commonly reported with people with dyspraxia and other learning differences such as dyslexia and ADHD um, one of the reasons for that is is because as Phoebe said um, we spend so much energy throughout the day trying to remember things, trying to get things done, that when we get to the quiet and the peace of a night time, where we don't have the stimulus of sound and conversation and all those other distractions which stop us remembering a lot of stuff, it's quiet, it's dark, and that gives the brain chance to actually remember those things, and that's why these random thoughts come in. Um, we'll give you some tips on those in the next uh, instalment, um, but these are the things I want you to consider for a good sleep hygiene and establishing a good sleep routine. Um, first of all is your environment. Have a think about your environment and that's just not just the physical bed, it's the sounds you can hear, the temperature of the bed, the temperature of the room. If your room is cluttered and messy, I think you can have a cluttered sleep, if that makes sense. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. Um, sometimes having to tidy around before bed and giving yourself that hour before bed to do it is a, is a really good tip. Um, also, that leads in nicely to the one hour rule. Um, the one hour rule is kind of um, very flexible, you can change it if you like, but the idea is it takes your brain an hour to calm down from stimulation. So trying to avoid television programs, trying to avoid um, Game Boys and Xboxes and computer games like that, not answering emails in bed, not watching YouTube in bed, um, because that's all very um, high stimulus brain activity, which then takes a while to dissipate. Um, then also the last one is um, preparing stuff the night before to take some of that anxiety away that Phoebe experiences and gets up really early in the morning, way, way before she needs to. It might actually take me only an hour and a half to get ready but I would, I would get up two and three hours earlier than I needed to because I, I'm not a, I have really poor time awareness as well so I don't realise how what would you say, how long it takes me to do something and I don't want the stress the next day of thinking I've not got enough time which makes again sleeping a negative experience. And also cuts down on the amount of sleep you need because she's getting up three hours early rather than an hour and a half. And one of those things that you can do is things like packing your bag the night before. I have students who lay out their clothes to the point of their underwear and their accessories the night before. I do that. I also put my bag in front of the front door so I have to physically step over anything I need to take and that's impossible so it always means it gets taken. Um, sticky notes, whiteboards, all kind of things like this. So they're the sort of things that we're talking about and they're some of the tips we will discuss in more depth. So the three things we want you to think about before the next instalment are environment, the one hour rule and preparing the night before. Um, also, before we say goodbye, we've, we've, got, we've purchased a new camera and we wanted to know whether the quality is better and whether you could leave us some feedback. That would be great. So we'll see you soon for some tips and some hints. And, and our personal routines. Yes. <laughs> the difference in the personal routines. Bye. See you later. Bye.